Okay. Um, uh, we'll go ahead and open the uh, meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I am David Bloomberg. Joining me are Sarah Northrup, Elizabeth Silver, and Maureen Scanlon from the board, uh, and with support from Nathan Chung from the mm -hmm. city of Northampton, and Carolyn Mish is also on the line from the city of Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability. Uh, notice of this hearing was published on August 31 and September 7th. Um, this hearing is being video recorded um, and uh, we only have one matter on the agenda tonight, but before we get to that, we always open the meeting for public comment. This would be for members of the public who are here who would like to address the board about matters other than the special permit that is on the agenda for tonight relating to 129 Riverbank Road. Uh, public will have an opportunity to address that uh, matter after we open the hearing on that application for a special permit. So first, is there anyone from the public who wanted to address the board about matters that do not relate to the special permit for 129 Riverbank Road? And I'll ask Nathan just to confirm if there's anyone raising their hand or asking to address the board on that basis. And if there are none, are there none? I realized the chat was disabled, so I just enabled it. So people can either raise their virtual hands or type into chat if they have any general public comment besides the hearing matter. So, um, I guess not. Um, seeing none, okay. Seeing none, we'll move on. It's past 5.30, so we can open the hearing for the application for a special permit by Richard Watling um, for the uh, an addition. Uh, to the building at 129 Riverbank Road, map ID 25-025, with new zoning violations. Uh, because this is a request for a special permit, a supermajority vote is required, namely three of three members. Um, and really what is before the board is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the need to determine <clears throat> that the new, if the new rear setback violation is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing non-conforming <laughs> aspects of the house. Again, notice of this hearing was published on August 31 and September 7th. Um, before we launch into this, um, I think uh, I might take a stab at a summary in the hopes perhaps of being able to proceed a little more efficiently uh, with the understanding that if that everybody will have an opportunity to be heard uh but um, just bear with me here i'm trying to find the uh yeah about 200 things open here um <clears throat> Um, this is a new special permit application, an application for a new special permit. However, as I understand it, it is effectively identical to the special permit that was requested and granted by uh, this board back in 2021. And it relates to a building on uh, Riverbank Road at 129 Riverbank Road, where the owner who is the applicant built an addition and back uh, without at the time having obtained the necessary permitting. And in 2021, this board granted the request, the applicant's request for a special permit, which among other things had as a condition, um, a requirement as offered by the applicant to for the applicant to acquire ownership of a strip of land adjacent to the property 
at 129 Riverbank Road <laughs> in order to eliminate what otherwise would have been a uh, a violation of, I think it was the lot coverage uh, requirement ratio. Um, and there were a series of extensions involved uh, because of the difficulty the applicant had getting uh, approval for or really entering into a contract and closing the purchase of that strip of land as as uh, was anticipated and proposed in the original special permit application. Um, subsequently, as I understand it, the applicant's neighbor who owns that piece of land sold that property to a new current owner who did agree to sell the strip of land to the applicant and who uh, has signed a contract which was attached as an exhibit to the uh, brief submitted by the applicant's attorney showing that the parties had not only had agreed to uh, buy and sell that land so that the applicant could acquire the necessary strip essentially to put him exactly where he intended to be two years ago and in compliance with the requirements of the special permit granted two years ago. Then there was a delay because the applicant, uh, sorry, the abutters bank uh, was not willing or able to grant the necessary partial release of mortgage so that the applicant could acquire clear title to that strip of land. Uh, now enough time has gone by and uh, we are advised under the current application that the applicant is ready to proceed with the acquisition of that strip of land and everything is lined up to do that, provided that one, we grant this special permit. It's conditioned on getting the permit to pro to, and two, the applicant obtains the necessary order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. And that's pending the outcome of this hearing because there's no point in going to the Conservation Commission if the special permit is not granted by this board. Um, so in a lot of ways, we're just dialing the clock back, not in a bad way. We all understand what happened and why, and why it's been two years since we were last uh, uh, looking at an application for a special permit. But as I understand it, the special permit that we've been presented with and is before us tonight is virtually identical, if not identical to the one that we granted two years ago. Um, so in that sense, two years ago, we determined that the addition was not substantially more detrimental to the characteristics of the neighborhood. We included the condition that the applicant acquire title to the strip of land to eliminate one of the um, new violations that would be created, namely relating to uh, lot coverage ratio. But and and so the only violation we're looking at, assuming that's a condition that gets satisfied, is the same one that was always there, and that had to do with setbacks, specifically in the rear of the property. Um, so again, it's sort of deja vu all over again, uh, and I don't have a problem with that. I'm just trying to summarize as um, concisely as possible where I understand we are and where the board is and where the applicant is and what it is we're here to look at tonight, which again is this question of, is the addition uh, substantially more detrimental to the characteristics of the neighborhood, uh, which is something we determined two years ago was not the case. We were we approved it, provided the strip is acquired, and that's where we are once again tonight. So um, I would ask that the comments, that it's not necessary in my mind, speaking for myself, to delve into a whole lot of other details, even relating to the history of this, unless it's to add something I haven't already described. And I would ask members of the public, first of all, anyone when they get their chance who speaks, to identify themselves, really anyone who addresses the board, to identify yourself by name and address for the record that we're keeping, and if possible, for the sake of um, efficiency and, and uh, the time spent uh, to limit your comments as much as you reasonably can to um, the issues that I just described that that I believe are the ones that are before us. That having been said, people have a right to speak. Um, 
So I'll, with that as a somewhat belabored preface, I will ask Attorney McLaughlin uh, if I have sort of captured the situation accurately and if there's anything you, you want to add to what I've said. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think you did a wonderful job. I think it was uh, extremely accurate and uh, complete. Um, the application is an application that is indeed a new application because the old application said that the old order said that if it wasn't completed within a certain time frame, it would be null and void. Uh, but for that, I would be seeking to amend the the uh, case you already had. But because it said it became null and void, we had to start over again. But it is um, essentially the the same situation over again. My my client uh, built a piece of uh, an addition to his house that violates the rear setback. And um, the provision, which is uh, 350-9.3A10, uh, states that if you build an addition to a pre-existing non-conforming home, and you can have new violations, even open space violations, it was my reading of it, and Bacon Wilson's reading of that statute, just so you know. But um, um, I'm not seeking you can have that the building go forward so long as it's not substantially more detrimental substantially not just more detrimental but substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than um the existing non-conforming structure um the the it's a uh, garage in back it violates the rear setback now i should tell you what we're not doing tonight just because some things have come up i mean it, we're not asking you to do anything regarding uh, a finding pertaining to the open space because we're not questioning the city's interpretation of the statute. Instead, th they say that the open space can't be cured by this finding. I disagree with that respectfully, and I, Bacon Wilson does too, but I'm I, instead, instead of fighting that, we're saying we're going to pay $75,000. My client's a plumber, not an executive, all right? He's paying $75,000 to buy the land next door. So that there is no issue of open space. You don't have to make any finding regarding open space because we're taking care of that. Okay. And and the plans are the same plans that um were used last time. They're um they depict uh 1500 some odd square feet of purchase from the neighboring property. A nice gentleman next door who saw that my client was in a perilous condition and agreed to sell. I want to speak out for him. Um and so that's not an issue. The open space is taken care of by the purchase. Also, there's a there was some question regarding uh, a cupola. I hope I'm saying that right. That my client's plans were imperfect. You know, he did them himself. Didn't show the cupola, uh, um, and that cupola. I'm not seeking any zoning relief pertaining to that because it's not higher than 35 feet. So I don't need any zoning relief. I think we could seek zoning relief, but we don't have to. So that's simply not an issue here today. Um, your finding is not going to let the cupola sneak in or anything like that, because we're saying it's not higher than 35 feet. So forget about it. It's just not here tonight. Um, so uh, what's all that's here is the fact that this new building um, violates the rear yard setback. And um, and I think um, there was a finding. I know there was a finding last time. And the the issue is, what do the neighbors think? It, it doesn't. The the law isn't. What is uh, the zoning integrity, or what do people? You know, anyone can speak and talk. But the issue is, what do the neighbors say about this? Is this something that's going to be so bad, so substantially bad for the neighborhood that you can't make this finding? And uh, I have to tell you, my client, we're not just taking this as you know, a given that uh, it's going to happen again. My client has spoken to all, practically all of his neighbors. I can tell you right now, I have a list of 21 names, 21 neighbors, people who are in the neighborhood, who are all uh, say that they approve the addition going forward. I can, some of these people are older, don't want to do Zoom. Uh, and you're, you're getting this, you know, it's this isn't a courtroom. So technically some of this, is hearsay, but it's admissible. And I've got 21 names. I can give you the names and addresses of all these neighbors who support this application. 
uh, I can read them out. And uh, and many of them are, I can see, are online and are ready to speak in favor of this. So um, this is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. It's a garage that's off on a rear yard setback. It's not going to hinder the neighborhood. I mean, if this was a, a separate building, if it didn't have this attachment to the first building, it would be this, it could be this high, it could be this blocking this views anyways. I mean, it's not a substantial detriment to the neighborhood. You found it wasn't a substantial detriment in 2021. There's been no statutory change. There's been no change on the ground. There's been no ordinance change. And many, many people, again, are speaking in favor of it, who are actual neighbors. I would hope that this board could, again, do what you did last time. But this time, I've got a purchase and sale agreement. And I've got uh, Ward Smith, one of my best uh, wetlands experts, who's working diligently. It's already marked. He's waiting for plans from a, a horticulturalist about plantings that can be done to uh, to so that we can abide, get, get a really good um, order of conditions that we can live with and uh, take care of the wetlands issues. So it's very different than last time, only because the follow through. Everything else is, is as as you said, Mr. Chair, extremely, extremely similar. And um, if you want, uh, I'm, I'm going to read all these names of people, and many of them are on this Zoom right now. Well, maybe we could. Talk. Maybe I'll suggest that you could provide the list to Nathan. Is that okay? Rather than read them into the record, is would that work for you? Yeah, I, mean, no, I, 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 I take I your. I will try. That will test my technical abilities, but I will. I will try to do that as we speak. Well, but, I mean, just just for the file. I, I don't even mean this this moment, unless okay. someone else on the board feels strongly. I'm willing to take at face value what Attorney McLaughlin is telling us that he's got a list of 21 names. I am. I'm very interested in hearing from the people who are here. Of course. Um, do, does any other board members have any strong feelings about that, rather than having the list read to us? No, I, I I feel that's appropriate. I am eager to is this being a new application. I um, would prefer that we have the opportunity to hear fully from people who are um, who want to offer input about this. And because last time, yes, in fact, we did get input, but I don't think it, as a new. Um, new application, I don't think we should base this solely on what we heard last time, which were two uh, abutters in support and one abutter who spoke to the previous attorney who was in opposition. And I, I just, I feel like those are, I, maybe we add those to this, but I think what we hear today as fresh input is equally valid. And I think hearing, having attorney and McLaughlin submit that list to Nathan is, is adequate as augmented by whoever we hear from today. Any other, sense? Sure. Any other board members want to comment just on this point of, uh, I mean, we, we can sit and have them read the names to us, but um, if people, if anyone else feels strongly about that. Um, okay. So maybe you could just give the list at your convenience attorney you. McLaughlin to Nathan the um, I will. I do want to make one comment, and that is that um, I've always viewed in our role as part of our role here in determining whether there's something is or is not substantially detrimental, the evidence submitted, so to speak, by virtue of of co public comments, at pro or con, is um, is it effectively provides guidance to us, but it's not dispositive. It's not, it's not uh, you know, by majority vote, if more people uh, are for than against, then that means it's not substantially detrimental uh, because otherwise I, th I think we're, I think the point is we're supposed to be, I walked the near, I walked in front of the property today. I've been there many times before in that neighborhood. Um, we're also, you know, we're supposed to take everything into account. The 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 opinions of the neighbors and abutters, uh, our own reactions and opinions from visually inspecting the property. Um, uh, in other words, the mere fact that we, if we have in the old days a room full of people <laughs> saying one thing or the other to us is not necessarily dispositive. It's not necessarily how 
you know, we make our decision, but it's certainly very valuable input in making the decision because certainly if you have a lot of people who are in favor and none who who feel the need to communicate and say they're against it, um, that is certainly very helpful, a very helpful indication of uh, because it 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 suggests what the neighbors who live there feel about this issue of whether it's substantially more detrimental. But the mere fact that you have 20 names or 50 names or there are 10 people, all of whom speak in favor, again, it's it's a strong indication, but but it's not dispositive. This isn't a, a public vote as to, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down based on how many neighbors voice their opinion. I yes. guess is what I'm trying to say. Mr. Chairman, two things. I just sent the list. I was able to do it. I okay. just I just sent the list to to Nathan. And um in regards to the question of um, the the factual issue, substantially more detrimental, realize that is the keys. What is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood? It's not what is questioning the integrity of the bylaws, or or else the statute would have said that. It really, so that when it comes to factual evidence as to what is a detriment to the neighborhood. The, the best evidence is the neighbors saying that that doesn't bother us. That's not detrimental or that is detrimental. Right. Well, I think it's good evidence. It's just there could be neighbors who couldn't physically show up or weren't comfortable showing up or whatever. But I, th I think the point is made where we're, I don't disagree. I might say it instead of best evidence, it's good evidence. But but again, this isn't a court of law either. So. Right. So anyway, why don't we why don't we continue? Do the any of the board members have any questions first for Attorney McLaughlin before we get any public comments? If not, I'm sorry. Not at this time. Okay. So um, uh, I think again we'll um, give people members of the public who are here who would like to address the board on this matter a chance to do so. Um, I, uh, I, 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 again, you, you're, you're entitled to say what you want, but I, but I would ask that the comments are brief and especially if it's only to say, I approve this because I don't think this is detrimental to our neighborhood. Honestly, that's all we need to hear. Um, but, but, uh, but, um, but I'll let people speak for themselves. So there are a couple names. That, well, I, I, actually, Nathan, you, you need to see if anyone raises their hand or, or, send something in chat to ask to speak. I guess that's how this works, right? Yeah, nobody has raised their virtual hands and nobody has sent me any message via chat. Um, right now, um, oh, this person, Rachel Perry, I don't know if yes. I- Yes, I totally support the building. I am in total favor of it, as is my mother, Cheryl Watling, who is here with me. Would you are, mind? Uh, would you mind before going further? Would you mind stating your name and your address for the sure. record? Rachel Perry, one forty-five Riverbank Road. Is that the house right in back? Because in a lot of ways, I mean, just applying common sense, that's the one that's most impacted. Is that the house right in back? There's three houses in between us, but I I view the addition right from our porch, our side porch. Okay, and you're and you're and you have no objection to it. You don't view it as detrimental. None whatsoever. Okay, thank Would you. Would love to see it finished. Thank you. Thank and you. You're related to the applicant. Is that correct? I am. I yeah. am. Yes. Just checking. Thank yes, you. I've I've lived in the neighborhood for fifty plus years. Okay, thank you. Thank Anyone, you. Appreciate that. Anyone else like to speak? Do you, do you want to speak? I guess I don't know how to do this. Just you just talk now. Hi, I'm Cheryl Watling. I'm Richard's mother, and I am in favor of the completion of this because it's an eyesore. Okay. And I live at 145 Riverbank Road. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else who's here who would like to speak? Sorry, I muted. There's Nancy W. No last name, fully spelled out, but I can ask her to unmute. I. I didn't allow automatic unmuting by the participants because there are just too many people. I can unmute Nancy W next if you wish. Thank you. Okay. Please. Ray, you unmuted me. Thank you. My name is Nancy Whitley. My address is 144 Riverbank Road. 
Uh, uh, sorry, it. apologies. Would you re spell your last name? W H I T L E Y. L E Y. And uh, what is your one forty? What's the address mm -hmm. again? One forty four. Okay, Riverbank. Riverbank. Yep, road. Thank you. So I live on the other side of the street. I have a a, a very good view of Richard's house. I'm supportive of his. Oh, I I I apologize. I I press okay. the wrong key. I'm sorry. Would you? Okay. No. Yeah, no I'm worries. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You said I, you support, and then we lost it. Yeah, yeah, I live. Okay, I live across the street from Richard's house. I can see his house, and I support um, his being able to complete the addition. I don't see it as any substantial uh, departure from the tone or style of, or whatever of the neighborhood. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to know? No, I don't think so. I appreciate okay. that. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Uh, uh, somebody just sent me a chat message. Okay. Um, well, this person sent the comment via chat, didn't identify themselves. Um, do you want me to read the chat message, which is unidentified? It's still in support. Do you want me to um, read it? Chair, it's uh, anonymous, but it's in support. Okay. Uh, I, okay, sure. Okay, it's very brief. I would like to say I'm in favor and support him by Thank iPhone you. 245. Thank you. Any Anyone else? Um, nobody else. Um, oh, okay. This person just identified themselves. Um, well, my name is Joanna, Joanna Collins in support. Would you be able to also uh, state your address in the chat for record? And the address is 140 Fair Street extension in the Meadows. Thank you. Anyone else? It looks like John Citro. 86 uh -huh. Ball Road. Um, John Citro, did he send a message to you? Because well, I didn't... It came up on the screen and then it disappeared. It was John Citro, 86 Ball Road. Here he is again, speaker not working. <laughs> we know how that is. Uh, but are you you have me on mute. Do you see him, Nathan? Yes, I I, I didn't. I disabled people being able to unmute themselves automatically because there's so many people. But John Citro, you should be able to unmute now. Yeah, John Citro is unmuted. Go, please go ahead. State your name and address for the record. Howard Moore supports the application. A message. Um, maybe we should, uh, because John Citro was about to speak, uh, let's, uh, maybe we should allow John Citro to speak first. And yes. I don't understand there's another chat, but please, John Citro, go ahead. Um, so it seems like John Citro's speaker is not working, even though or mic is not working, even though John Citro is unmuted. So um, maybe you can type into the chat your comment, Mr. Jo or Mrs. John Citro. Uh, in the meantime, um, while we're waiting for that, maybe the, the other uh, there, John Citro, I agree with Richard, uh, Richard being the applicant. OK, thank you. And uh, there's another comment uh, it says sent to the general chat. Um, Howard Moore, uh, Zoom name is Zoom user, Howard Moore, 56 Cross Path Road. I support the application. Thank you. Anyone else? There's John Citro again. I have no 86 Ball Road. I have no issues with the house. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Uh, Chairman, if, if I can speak in regards to 135 Riverbank Road, that is the uh, my rear abutter. Yes. He is, he is my uncle, and he is on the list 
that John is going to provide you. His name is David Fournier, 135 Riverbank Road. And he's uh, at my disposal. If you guys need him to speak, he will. But he'd he'd rather not. Okay. Okay. I think then there's... Whoops. Oh, oh John Citro's at 86 Riverbank Road. He mistyped before. Okay. Thank you. Oh. We'll take that under advisement, Mr. Watling. Any anyone else? Is that it? That might be it. Okay. I can't see anything on my screen to suggest anyone else, but we've heard from a number of people. Um, uh, board members, um, thoughts. Well, this is Sarah Northrup. But having reviewed this before and compared this application to the prior, um, I'm not particularly concerned, um, except that it, of course, has to meet the conditions. And um, it does seem like uh, the whole principle of, you know, doing something and apologizing later didn't work very well. Um, and I think uh, I, I, I agree that it would be good to see this brought into compliance and let him finish. Yeah, thank you. Um, Maureen or Elizabeth, any comments before we uh, proceed, I guess? If, just anything you wanted to say now, I suppose. So our next step after this would be to close the open forum and then we would discuss amongst ourselves? We could, uh, and if we feel ready, we could also have a motion and a second, and we can have a discussion after the second of the motion. The one thing I want to make sure to gets mentioned here because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I feel pretty strongly about it is we will want to have a condition again in terms of an end date on the uh, the special permit if the conditions aren't satisfied. Those conditions being the acquisition, closing the acquisition of the land, and as I now understand it, obtaining the uh, order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Uh, May I be heard on that, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Um, the the issue, as I'm sure you realize, is the Conservation Commission. I mean, um, we are going to purchase this property. We're obligated to purchase this property. As for an apology, my client is paying $75,000 to purchase the property. And by my reading, he shouldn't have to do that, that the findings should forgive him from the open space. But so he's paying a $75,000 apology. That's that's how to read this, okay? Um, but the timing is this way. Um, Mr. Uh, Ward Smith thinks that he can get the order of conditions after the uh, the notice by, the, uh, by late December. And I want, 45 days after that to purchase, to do the acquisition, because I just want to make sure nobody appeals for a superseding order from the DEP in Springfield from the order of conditions coming out of the Conservation Commission. It doesn't happen very often, but I just want to make sure that doesn't happen. So that my my guess is that by the end of the year, um, we'd have a, we hopefully will have a CONCOM order of conditions, this special permit, I can do the purchase, and there's no appeal from the uh yeah. to the DEP. well would, would would year end i mean i don't i almost don't care what the deadline is as long as there's a deadline because we don't want to have to keep coming back and extending one two we you know everybody including i i i'm sensitive to your that your client has waited this long uh um uh for reasons uh, for the various reasons that we don't have to repeat um so waiting a little longer to in my mind doesn't matter um thirdly it doesn't make sense to me personally to tear have to to, to have to see this building torn down if it can be avoided in any way i'm speaking for myself um so it's more i mean our, if, if you're saying that a deadline of december 31st is something that gives you the breathing space you need i wouldn't have a problem with that i just there just has to be 
another end date, just like there was two years ago. Um, because this time, it seems like the ducks are really lined up in a row in a way that perhaps wasn't the case two years ago. Yes, I mean, you, as you know, in the um, in the appeal of the building inspector's order for the teardown order, we were talking the end of December or near the end of December. And what I had asked for in the application here was an order that gave me 45 days after I got a CONCOM order of conditions. But according to Mr. Smith, um, he thinks he can do it this year. If you want to have um, state that we must execute the purchase by the end of the year, um, that could be something that I think we could work with, but I wouldn't say that it's null and void after that date. I mean, that would be a compliance date and I could come forward in case, heaven forbid, there is an appeal for a superseding order. I don't think there will be, but um, it's theoretically possible. I get an order of conditions after a notice of intent and somebody doesn't like it. Um, and I hope that doesn't occur, um, but when I can deal with it, if I have to go to the DP, but um, I just want to leave the breathing room just for that. I mean, I'm just hoping that we get a clean order of conditions. We have the special permit. We can do the purchase and get going. That's that's really what we want to do. And he'll pay the $75,000 to purchase the strip of land. So um, maybe the end of the year, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't use the language null and void because then we'll have to do this all over again. But you can um, maybe report back and uh, order a date of compliance for the end of the year. But I wouldn't say that it's null and void in case I come back to you and say, somebody's appealing my order of conditions. And that could happen. Okay, well, I think the board, maybe the board can discuss that question. Um, I have some thoughts about it, but interested. I, you know, I'd like to hear what other board members are thinking. Do uh, Maybe we should keep, um, before we close the, the public hearing, um, maybe we can either continue the conversation, uh, board members, just so that we have the opportunity to get input uh, before we do, if we feel we need it or have follow-up questions before we close the hearing. That's one thought, because how often have we closed the hearing and then kind of needed to, after our own discussion, needed some input that we can't get. Um, I, would, I, would, I would appreciate that, Mr. Chairman, because I would love to answer any questions that anyone has yeah. uh, in regard to anything. Okay, Elizabeth, we haven't. I don't think we've heard what you're thinking. <laughs> I'm unusually quiet. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> no, not at all. I just haven't heard. Yeah, no. Um, I think the only thing I would want to feel um, compelled to add to the com comments that we've heard so far is that we did receive another comment from an individual opposed to this. Um, so it is not a hundred percent in support, um, and. Uh, we, we, it's in the record, so I just wanted that noted as well. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, can I, can I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Maureen. Um, yes, well, uh, I would be interested in having Nathan's thoughts because when we um, looked at this, you know, uh, you know, 2021, we were advised by our then administrator, Carolyn Mish, that this type of thing doesn't usually even come before us until that piece of land is purchased. And that the Conservation Commission component, they're a separate department and they we're not tied into them. So I'm just, and so we were kind of going beyond as a you know courtesy to permit this to happen as best as possible for the applicant uh, you know, hoping that this would this would work out timing wise. So I'm just interested in Nathan's input on how unusual is this to move forward with this contingency. It just seems it, it it really complicates the situation. But I understand the financial ramifications of the timing. You know, obviously for the client for the applicant. Um. I, and to clarify, Maureen, are you asking how unusual it is, or what? What? What are you seeking again? Would you? Clarify? I guess our um, yeah, I. Carolyn Mish had said that typically this would not even come before us 
as a special permit based on the, uh, you know, increased setback violation without the applicant having already cleared the open space uh, terms by, you know, purchasing that the additional land required. And that's not something we've discussed tonight, but I think it is what led us to come up with a condition that was that included kind of that null and void term, you know, terms and end time. And I'd like to balance that out. And I don't know if there is something the city, you know, your department, Nathan, would want to weigh in on there to help advise us. Um, so because I, I I haven't done a statistic analysis of all the past hearings where similar incidents occurred, I can say like how uh, unusual this is in relation to other ones. But I mean, the city has uh, taken steps besides enforcement. It has also taken steps uh, for a lot to allow the applicant to proceed this with some kind of solution for uh, many years. Um, I think the initial unpermitted structure was noticed in 2020, and there's been some um, different um, different um, hearings be based on that. Um, I think I don't want to dwell on those details, but yes, there was the special permit that was granted in 21, and also um, after the um, special permit became void due to the applicant not able to acquire the property, you know, the building commissioner ordered the demolition or issued a demolition order and the um, applicant and his counsel uh, requested an appeal with the zoning board. So there's also a, a, a zoning board appeal, a zoning board appeals appeal that is, um, is being stayed right now. Um, in terms of the open space, so uh, I'll just give you some some a little few few, few figures briefly. Um, if the strip of land was not acquired, um, we're not considering the strip of land. If you're only looking at the um, open space violation caused by the addition without the strip of land added to mitigate it, um, the open space would have gone somewhere from fifty five percent. Uh, and that would be in compliance conformity because the minimum open space requirement is 50% for the special conservative zone uh, the applicant is in. It would have gone from that 55% to 35%. So that would create a, a new zoning violation. Um, and also um, the the size, left right size setback would have continued. Uh, without the strip of land, uh, with the strip of land added, it would actually uh, remove the right side setback violation. Uh, with the also with the strip of land added, which is about fifteen hundred square feet, uh, that would um, uh, yeah, bring back the open space up to about fifty percent. So that would uh, stay conforming. Um, so those are some details for uh, for for you and the public and. In, I, I'm not sure if the number was discussed, but the rear setback violation introduced by the audition, which will stay, which will continue because with, regardless of the strip is added or not, because the strip is not being added to the rear, but to the right side. The rear setback violation introduced by the audition is 3.4 uh, feet. And that's, uh, that's based on the survey the applicant did uh, back in June of 21 for the ANR process that's needed to acquire the strip of land. So thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I be heard on the CONCOM interrelationship with the special permit? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know of any ordinance in Northampton that specifically requires um, CONCOM to be done uh, as a precursor to special permit. I've frequently dealt with uh, matters in development where the special permit says, oh, you've got to also do your con time. I just was involved with a case in, in Deerfield where someone, uh, the applicant was the, the town itself and they were getting the site plan review as opposed to the special permit. And it said right in there, you better go finish your con com. I mean, I, I think we've done that too, yeah, Maureen. Yeah. We, we've had, we've had applications over the years where there was, you know, a permit was required by the planning board relating to the same project or the conservation commission relating to the same project. Um, although I, I don't, I, I'm not sure if that was your question, Maureen, or not, but uh, 
No, that's helpful, David. It's uh, particularly that I'm just thinking back to the um, council we got, the input we got from Carolyn Mish, which was to make sure that our thought, our findings or decision are separate and independent from the CONCOM. I don't know if they could have be happening concurrently. I don't know if that's even possible. It seems like perhaps they could be, but that's not our responsibility. I just- Yeah, was no, I mean, no matter what, they have to get an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission, um, which effectively means in order for the applicant to comply um, with our special permit, the applicant has to not only close the purchase of that strip of land, but get any other permits that are necessary in order for this structure to be lawful. Um, that's that's uh, that's my take on it. I'm not sure <laughs> that that's an expert take on it, but that's my take on it. No, that that makes total sense. I'm just thinking in terms of it means that we are tasked with factoring in the um speculative amount of time any of those other proceedings could take that's that's what i would like to find out like hear from my well, colleagues here i, I think the community. only the only comment in the staff report that addresses that and i'm looking at it uh, the staff decision recommendation states and this is public record of course states that since the purchase and sale agreement is contingent on both our special permit and the order of conditions, we should consider the time it would take for the applicant to apply and get the decision on the order of conditions. And then we should have um, a void date, basically, that takes into account the amount of time it'll take for the applicant to do that. So okay. again, I don't know if it's responsive, but I, I think to me that means the staff was contemplating the issues you're alluding to in their recommendations. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Um, and the only real issue, I think, because again, we've come this far and and um, and so has the applicant, uh, right or wrong, but uh, certainly the applicant has been, from my observation, moving heaven and earth to try to write, you know, what needed to be corrected. Um, um, I think it just, to me, we just circle back to how much time do we provide? Um, I do think we have, a, a, have to have a void date, but maybe we can do both, counselor. Maybe we can say the applicant has until year end, let's make it as, flexible as we can year end to comply and maybe january 31st 2024 it's void something like that so that you can come back before it's void if, if okay you need to. So, so long as it's subject to uh a, you know an addendum or or a, a change the only thing i'm really but, well you that, that'll give you the you. flexibility to apply for an amendment and the time okay. to apply okay. for an amendment as so long as that's clear, I mean, I don't expect anybody to appeal for a DP superseding order. It's very expensive. It's it's a very elaborate procedure, and but I just have to leave that um, consideration out there. I and and just so you know, this isn't theoretical. My my client has already paid Mr. Smith a retainer, Ward Smith, and the thing is flagged. We're waiting for. Um, an expert who's going to set up the planting system and the types of plants. I mean, we're really trying to do this and we should be able to do it. Um, but I just don't want somebody to appeal it if we get it. <laughs> that's that's my only concern. Right. And but but wouldn't again, this is maybe neither here nor there, but I'm just thinking out loud. It would have to be in a butter, would it not? Who appeals it? And most of your butters are here in favor. Yeah. But I know. Yeah. I don't. Right. I mean, um, I to be honest. I'm not certain that it is statutorily limited in the same way to a butters yeah. a. I think there, yeah. there might be more leeway on that. So I'm a little okay. bit but 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 presumably it's unlikely. But it's but unlikely. in any event, that's why we're building. And if my fellow board members say, why so much time? The answer is we've waited two years to, in other words, not only has the applicant moved heaven and earth to try to right a wrong, so to speak. 
I think we have to, <laughs> and uh, so that we can avoid having this this structure being torn down. You know, there's a expression in real estate law that I think case decision that is in a completely different context, but that is the law abhors a forfeiture. Um, so in my mind, that's one reason we've been so patient so that the, the structure which granted started its life uh, in the absence of the necessary permits and approvals uh, does not have to be torn down. So that that's I'm talking to my fellow board members here. That's my thinking. Okay, let's give let's give them let's give them a, a, a another long leash, so to speak. Uh, year end to comply, January thirty first, twenty twenty four. It's void. That gives plenty of time to come back if you want to ask for an amendment before it's void. All right. Um, and of course, you know we'll hear whatever you come back with. Um, uh, what what do how to more how to uh yeah go ahead sarah you raise it. Um, well so for our purposes just for the uh decrease of non-compliance by purchasing the open space um i don't uh if he's buying something that's wet it doesn't really matter to us because it's providing the open space and um uh, allowing this from a zoning perspective um, to come closer into compliance. So I don't really, you know, I appreciate wetlands and that process, but I don't know that it has any bearing on us. Um, I don't think it does. You're right. Except that they can't close the purchase. Well, that's a choice. They put a condition on it. They decided they, but as far as uh, uh, as far as zoning is concerned, I, I if if the wetlands weren't an issue for them, they wouldn't have perhaps bought them with any conditions. Because they would have just bought it already, because that would have shown okay already in compliance. Um, well, so I, I agree with you. It doesn't relate to you know the the zoning ordinance we're looking at because it's it's inland wetlands it's not zoning but right. but but it's as a practical and business matter the applicant can't really be expected to spend seventy five thousand dollars to purchase this land if in the end he can't do what he needs to do anyway well because he can't get the order of conditions well if he can't get an order of conditions <laughs> is that going to make him tear it down i that doesn't have anything to do with zoning. Um, so, any case, let me um, move to my uh, my my question here is on how uh, what is the bearing of the appeal that has been postponed into December? Um, um, is that the uh, the building inspector's appeal yeah, or yeah yeah, yeah. can it, can I be heard and on that? Heard yes, from yes, him. yes, good question. Okay, okay. Um, the the appeal has been postponed because there's case law that says that a superior court judge or a land court judge shouldn't order the teardown of a structure ever if there's a chance that there could be zoning relief to make the structure legal. And in this case, um, where there is a chance, it's purchasing more land. It's got $75,000 to fix it. And that's what we're doing. And, and I don't think you're setting a bad precedent by, you know, allowing this application to go forward because it's not like he's just getting a rubber stamp for something he's done in a slap on the wrist. He had to actually purchase the more land. So, I mean, remember that you're not setting a bad precedent here. If somebody doesn't do something right, they're going to have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to fix it. And, and as for the, the issue of purchasing wetlands, we're not really purchasing wetlands. We're purchasing so that land we're going to put plantings on um, in regards to the fact that we did work within 200 feet of the Rivers Protection Act. It's not quite the river wetlands like you're talking about. It's more the Rivers Protection Act, which is a different, oh, statute. Oh, oh, oh. it's a totally different statutory scheme that, to be honest with you, Ward Smith understands better than I do, but. Um, well, the river's across the street. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not wetlands per se, it's the Rivers Protection Statute. And we're doing, we're, okay. we're making, uh, taking actions to, mm -hmm. in essence, accommodate for the fact that we built within 200 feet of the river. That's what's going on. 
it's a little bit more complicated than a wetlands issue. I, I have I have some familiarity with the uh, with wetlands permitting and been for comscoms a few times. So um, that's that's comforting. It's uh, uh, not quite as difficult to mitigate, right? Um, right. If it was actually wet, it's and no, yeah. um, so I think to uh, to a couple other folks' points, the um, why not wait until he's actually bought the land to ask us for this special permit? Because then there'd be no question as far as zoning goes. I, I, I'll let Attorney McLaughlin, I know what the answer is, but I'll let Attorney McLaughlin. I, I mean, Thanks. I, I, um, my client's already spending $75,000 pursuing. Or, or shall, looking, yes. I expect that that will happen. It hasn't yeah, happened yet. You, but I, he is a plumber. He can't spend $75,000 to buy a piece of land and then not that get the permit and the house gets torn down anyways. That's really unreasonable to ask anyone. Right. It would cost quite a bit. He would lose, he would spend $75,000 and have the house torn down. I mean, that's, that's not. That's reasonable. why, that's why it had as a real estate lawyer, that's why it had to be a condition in the purchase and sale agreement. Got it. Um, sure. Yeah. I just, I, 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 I know you. where you're going with it, Sarah, but I think that's I just, just wanted to clarify that and from a business standpoint, it, it it's not practical. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, thank you. And have we heard uh, from the building inspector on this application? Uh, Nathan or DPW for that matter, I guess. That was it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I heard from the building inspector. Um, there were some concerns about the height of the uh, addition. So he, the building inspector, um, went out and uh, did an estimated visual measurement, took some photos and did a, a, a visual me um, estimate based on um, the number of the sheet uh, sheeting. And uh, he estimates to be about um, 32 feet tall right now. Um, tall? Yeah, 32 feet tall. Yes, 30 foot feet, 32 feet high or tall. Yeah, 32 feet high. Let me say that to be clear. Yes. And, Thank you. and the limit is 35 as of right? Yes. Yep. 35 so is the limit. There. So he's comfortable with that. And DPW didn't have any other comments at this point, I imagine. No, I they didn't send us anything. I think it's they just um they didn't send me anything new. Thank you. Thank you. Um all right. Uh are we do we think we're ready to close the hearing and and then have a motion on. The... Uh, if I could be just heard yes. one more sure, thing. Sure, please go ahead. Yep. I, I just really request that we get this permit like you did last time. I don't see any difference between last time. It would be bizarre to, uh, there's no change in the ground. There's no change in the law. There's no change in the bylaws or the statutes or the ordinances. Um, so it would be hard to imagine how it wouldn't be you know, arbitrary to deny it now when you did it last time. And this time it's real. I mean, last time it was 45 days to do a purchase and get ComCom. That was never going to, that's very difficult. This time I have a purchase and sale. I have a great wetlands expert uh, who's already been paid, been retained. So we're really, really going to try all our best to get this done and bring this house into conformity. And um, we're, you know, we're sorry and sorry it ended up this way. My client's paying $75,000 that I believe statutorily he doesn't have to pay, but we're doing it. We don't want to fight. We just want to pay our dues and get this over with. And we hope you give us time for me to at least get the con come done also before I purchase it. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. So are we ready to uh, motion to close the public hearing? So moved. And second. Second. Uh, That'd be Sarah. Okay. And I guess we need a roll call, Nathan, because we're virtual on the motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Um, who made the motion? Sorry, was it Maureen? It was it Elizabeth I, made I it. Okay. Sarah seconded. Okay. Let me just write that down. And I'll take a roll call after I take some notes. Sorry about that. Close. Sarah second. Okay. So uh, by roll call, uh, Sc uh, Scanlon? I don't or 
Maureen? Oh, I think it's Sarah, Elizabeth, and oh, me. Oh, oh, I'm the sorry. My, uh, yeah, because my Thank apologies. You, Nathan. <laughs> having my not having my day. My apologies. Uh, by roll call again. Uh, starting over by roll call. Um, David. Uh, yes, I'm in favor. Elizabeth. Yes. And Sarah. Yes. You know okay. much. And um, how do people feel about my idea of uh, a motion to grant subject to the condition one that, um, well, actually, it's it doesn't even need to be a condition, Conservation Commission. So maybe to Maureen's point, it, it's not a condition that the, for us that they get Conservation Commission. They need it as a matter of law. The condition is simply that they close the purchase of the strip of land. Um and therefore are back in compliance. Uh, the timing. All, is... Maybe we have to state that the condition is that they acquire that strip of land. I think we have to repeat yes. that, don't we? Yes. Um, and what was the square footage they had to, it was 1,500 and something. Yes. Uh, oh, I found it, 1,568. So, so, so the condition would be that, they, that the applicant, uh, the, the special permit is granted subject to the condition that the applicant closes the purchase of be simple title to the strip of land consisting of 1,568 plus or minus square feet. What's the direction? It must be to the north, right? Uh, no, it's to the south. To the south of, uh, mm -hmm. is that right? As shown in the plan submitted to the board on or before December 31 in order to be in compliance with that condition. And if they fail to do so, our special permit will be null and void after January 31, 2024. That gives the applicant time to come back and seek an amendment. And again, we've waited two years. D does that, is everybody okay? Well, yeah, go yeah ahead. I did want to discuss that a little bit. Having uh, gone through the notice of intent process, I don't know, dozens of times. Um, sometimes you can get through it in a month. Sometimes uh, six months isn't enough. Um, so um, I, I, I wouldn't want us to be conditioning on the, uh, and the other folks disagree, but uh, I, I, I don't, I, I, I know it's been two years and it's all very uncomfortable and we don't like things dragging out like this, but um, as they're demonstrating good faith and moving forward, um, I would, I, I, I wouldn't want to put the, um, a, what is the latest deadline we could put on it? Sometimes things get stuck in the winter and you have something like a pandemic or I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I think it's whatever. Whatever we decide is appropriate. I think it, it can be more time, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but uh, so they, but they don't want to close until they've got all those ducks in a row. They can't. They can't. It's a condition in their contract. Yeah. That's, they being that's the applicant. Understandable. Yeah. Uh, but I also thought that the council was was didn't seem uncomfortable with the dates I had proposed um, because the point is it gives them, I mean, maybe your point, Sarah, is can we avoid having to hear an, uh, an application for an amendment um, uh, because, more, simply you know, because it's, more time is needed. I, I don't have a problem with more time. I um not really trouble for us to hear it. I, I, I can, I'm going to weigh in here um, sure. I, and I hear your concerns, Sarah. I think I would feel more comfortable with the deadline and the conditions with the, everybody seems to agree that they could come back if this is not done, but it makes me feel like something's moving <laughs> rather than stagnant. Um, so I, I guess I would like to put, I think David's suggestion was the end of the year and, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, but I'm not, I wouldn't want to leave this open-ended and I wouldn't want to make this a year. So I, I guess my preference would be to put a time certain on it and understand that it would be pretty much pro forma to come back for an extension if it looks like things are moving. Right. And it's not like we haven't granted extensions before. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, maybe not on the special permit, but on the appeal. The so, the um, yeah. end of the year being December thirty first um, is um, less than ninety days away. I'm just thinking of the weeks it takes to do um, getting on an a Conscom agenda and scheduling and advertising and all that. And then they have, I believe, 60 days, 45 or 60 days to respond. Um, so well, keep in mind, Sarah, that we yes. already have another hearing scheduled on the appeal, the building commissioner's appeal, sure. well within that time frame, long before sure. the uh, December 31st deadline. I guess so that could be extended again also. That right? could that could also be extended, but it's um it's not like setting December 31st is gonna you know close in on something else either. All right. I'm I'm fine with it, just uh expecting uh you know well what what if we push early. what if we push both of my dates back one one month and I'm sure the applicant will have no problem with, with us doing this, that we say that compliance, meaning meaning closing the purchase, satisfying the condition that the 1,568 feet is acquired by January 31, and, and the special permit is void by February 28th. I suppose I should make sure those are weekdays. Hold on. That's a, that's a Wait, okay compromise for folks, Maureen? We're being, um, to me, I, I think, uh, I support that. I think we're being more generous than, you know, the, the planning department suggested, which was their 60 day suggestion. And meanwhile, I think it really is. And the applicant is motivated on many levels. I mean, just by law, they can't use that space. They can't finish that space. They can't work on it. They can't inhabit it until they can uh, cross this hurdle. So they're motivated. It could maybe happen well before that. <laughs> well, I think Sarah's point is nobody controls the Conservation Commission. Right. Um, at least that was one of the points, I think. But but yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I could go either way. I, I just... Um... And, and right, to, uh, to Elizabeth's point, um, and maybe you said this as well, David, uh, with making that nice window in between, um, there is the opportunity to appeal it and follow due course. You mean you mean rather than appeal, you mean to file an application for an amendment yes. to yeah yes. for, to extend yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right. What do you think, think Elizabeth? I, I I don't care that strongly. I mean, I think it's fine what David just proposed. I, I'm not going to object to that. Yeah. Um, do we? I have a subsequent question, which is, um, do we need to reiterate the uh, prohibitions of working on the property in question and um, use using it and any of that in these conditions or order? It might be a question for Nathan, but I, I assume we don't have to put it in our decision because it's true as a matter of law. Is it not, Nathan, that at this point in time, the applicant is prohibited from continuing any work or occupying the uh, structure, the portion of the structure that's, you know, was added. There is a stop order. So, you know, I mean, I, 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 it might not be appropriate to list it as a condition, but I mean, you know, you can list just list as a finding or maybe not even, you know, that's not directly pertinent as yeah, a I think condition. It's a so, I think it's enough to know there's a right, stop word. Right. In other words, it's governed by a separate, um, uh, but, you know. Okay. And they can't get a building permit on without having this special permit. So Correct. I think there's enough checks in place. Yeah, that's my sense. Yeah. Elizabeth, are you comfortable with that? I'm okay with that. Nathan, did you have something else to add yeah yes yeah, yeah, sure and if i may speak um sure. yeah i think one thing uh, maybe want to clarify maybe their condition or just explaining the special permit is that you know this uh, granting this special permit if the board decides to do so is not a a blanket uh permit for all zoning violation we are specifically looking at the uh rear setback violation introduced by the uh, audition 
and the uh, uh, strip of land added, which actually alleviates some of the zoning violations. So we are only looking at the rear setback violation yeah. and granting the special permit means granting a special permit around that consideration, not any other uh, zoning right. violations. Right. But now we can, I mean, you've mentioned that for the record, which I think is helpful. I'm not, do, we don't really need to say that in the motion, right? Or in the decision, do we? Mm, not, no, no. I, I mean, I already the application and the way it's been presented, it only focuses on that. So, right. So, I just, just wanted I mean, to, yeah. yeah so, it. can we just put your comment in the record, Nathan, that, that, um, that this decision has no bearing whatsoever on anything other than the rear setback violation and the uh, lot coverage, which of course will be cured by satisfying the condition that the land is acquired. As will the side setback violation. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep, yep, that's that's cured as well. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, Nathan. That that by acquiring the land to the south, of any setback violation is cured. Right. Well, um, partly yes. I mean, thing is, um, so I'll I'll note this in the minutes. Yeah, I don't need to put it in the decision. One thing, I mean, one hypothetical is um, adding the strip cures the condition as it was presented and it found it found in a license survey back in June 2021. Um it, it you know so it doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily cure any additional issues that may be introduced, but we are not considering that. So I I, I guess I wanna there, so so we don't want to explicitly state okay. that this cures any side setback um violation because that's not before us right yeah okay. what's before the board is you know that you know you the, you are granting a permit for um permitting the uh rear setback violation introduced by the that's the only thing before us yeah. 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 okay good all right now, are we anybody want to take a stab at a motion i think you kind of already did didn't you did. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, so I think the idea would be, uh, and I can't, I don't think I can make the motion, but I'm suggesting the motion be to approve the application as presented for the special permit subject to the condition that the, in order to comply, the applicant has to acquire, acquire fee simple title to the strip of land shown on the plan submitted consisting of 1,568 feet immediately to the south along the southerly bound of the locus, and um, to acquire title by December 31, 2023. Well, are we saying January 31, 2020? Okay, January 31, 2023. And in any event, if that hasn't happened by February 28th, 2024, 2024, not 2023, February 28th, 2024, this, the special permanent will be void. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yes, Chair, please. I think the date clarification, um, so I think there was some, a little bit of misstating. So do you mean yes. January 31st, 2024? Correct. For the closing of the purchase of the land? Yes. Okay. And then next year, it happens to be a leap year. So February mm -hmm. ends on the 29th rather than um, 28th. Okay. How would let's, you like to proceed? Yeah, let's do 20, February 29th. We don't, how often do we get to do that? Mm -hmm. um, and that is, they're both weekdays, so that's good. Um, I would note that the, uh, that, that piece of land that he's acquiring just I'm just kind of spun around um, which way is north on the oh north. did I get it wrong you, you said south is that correct and yeah. not uh, northwest well, isn't it south because the river runs south and if you face the house I don't have the whole plan in front of me so I don't have a north right. arrow um, uh, your riverbank right road is on the northeast Oh, I see. I see. The, 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 you're right. I shouldn't just assume the river's north-south there. Oh, I, boy. Where's the whole plan? I can, yeah, I can look. I'm looking well, it up right now. Should we refer yeah. to it as uh, 
parcel Sorry. 27 assessor's map 25 or something that um uh or the street the, address the house at 117 is that correct mm -hmm. Riverbank road and it's in relation to the applicant's property at 129 Riverbank road it's on the right side the strip yeah. on the right side of the applicant's property yes. and uh the right side facing it from the street. Yeah, facing it from Riverbank Road. And it's the corner of Riverbank and Cross Path Road. Is the, the parcel. Is the land from which the 1560 yes. is yes. if I had a, the whole plan instead of an excerpt, yeah. I could answer this immediately, but I only have an excerpt. Yes. So that that abutting parcel is number 117 Riverbank Road. Okay. Um previous owner John Nicolau. Okay, so, oh, wait, uh, yes. Yeah, so, well, why don't we just say a 1568 taken from the the parcel situated at 117 Riverbank Road? Thank you. That's good. I think that's good enough. Yeah, that's good. Just, I can, just for add to reduce the ambiguity in the ANR that was submitted, its book number is, it's a portion of uh, the parcel with the book number 11756. And page number two zero six, okay, which is perfect. to be combined with the um, land of the applicant. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good. That's better. Yeah. Okay, so that's my that's my suggestion for a motion. Does, does somebody want to make the motion in accordance with how I just suggested it? Because it sounds like Nathan wrote it down too. Took notes. What he said. <laughs> I think you have to use the word move though. <laughs> yeah, I move what he said. Okay, and, and do we have a second, Sarah? Sorry, I was just uh, looking at the uh, GIS. Oh, yeah. um, second. Okay. Any further discussion before we have a roll call vote? I think we've discussed it pretty thoroughly. So I think we can have a roll call vote on the motion, please. Yes, uh, by roll call vote, David. Yes, and I'm in favor. Elizabeth? Yes. And Sarah? Yes. Unanimous. Unanimous. Thank you, uh, everybody who uh, attended for this. Um, the board members, did we have some minutes to vote on? Yeah. Uh, oh, minutes from 824. Yeah, yes, that was just the postponement. So I moved to oh. accept the minutes. I have a, one mine. I have one minor change. Oh, and please go ahead. Yeah. go ahead. I'm pulling it up. Sorry. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, last paragraph on page one. Last sentence, Nathan Chung added that the applicant recently filed a new special permit. I'd like to say either filed for a new special permit or filed a new special permit application. Uh, yes. Understood. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe or, uh, filed a new special permit application. Yeah. Instead of saying just a permit. Um, right. right. They didn't get the permit. They just filed right. to request right. one. Right. right. Understood. Okay. Good. <clears throat> so the motion is to approve the minutes with that uh, one change, I, I expect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did did we move yet on this? Yeah, I made the motion. Okay, so just with that one change and second. Uh, okay, I'll, Maureen, I wasn't that that meeting. Oh, can I second this? Sure. Sure, I think so. Yes. Since I was at that meeting. Yeah. Oh. Are you seconding, Mayor Maureen? Yes, uh, okay. I seconded it. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. roll call. By roll call, um, David? Yes, in favor. Elizabeth? Yes. And Maureen? Yes. Yeah. Motion then, to adjourn. Uh, before we do, um, I had let Nathan know, just I'll let everyone else know that August 26th, I am not going to be available. I don't think we know yet if there's going to be an agenda item, but- You mean, August, you mean October. September 28th? Or or October? October. October 26. It's way out. Oh, but, oh, oh, oh. Um, October. Did I, I'm, whatever I said, it's October 26th. Um, and so I don't know if people know yet if they're available, but I just wanted to let everybody know that. So 
Nathan can keep us up to date on what's coming up and when he's going to, who will be attending. It might be wise to just look a couple months out. Yeah, I, I don't know if people can tell now, but but if they can keep that in mind and Nathan will maybe remind people that if we do have something that night, um, that we need to see if we have a quorum with me not being there. Yes, I'm keeping a little spreadsheet of okay. attendance. So um, yeah, I already put David as not available for the 26th of uh, October. Okay. Um, we do uh, have some... We do have some items for the next hearing on the 28th. I don't know if you want to discuss that now and check availability. Uh, I should be available. Do you know um, what they are? Yes. Because, um, you know, I told you I couldn't come, but it depends on whether or not these are likely to take time or they're relatively quickly resolved. Um, because I have some time limits, but I could come if, depending if, you know, what the kind of issues are. Yes, I will um, I'll, I'll give you a quick summary of the applications. Um, and they're already on the public folder. They have already submitted their applications. So we have three. Um, two are finding uh, finding hearings. Uh, one, uh, one at the 193 uh, Prospect Street and one at uh, um, one, 81 Crescent Street. I might be bungling on the address a little bit wrong, but it's on the public folder. And those are uh, very similar. One is a uh, um, deck extension continuing the non-conforming setback on the left side, about four feet. They're just extending that continuing this non-conforming setback by eight feet by adding a new deck. Second one is uh, converting the um, existing garage in which has a zero uh, left side setback uh, by converting into a personal creative studio and uh, keeping the same footprint, the same non-conforming setback. So those are both require a finding uh, hearing, which doesn't require the full vote of the uh, board. It requires two thirds. So just simple majority. And the last one, the third one is a special permit hearing requiring unanimous vote for an oversized awning sign on 211 Main Street, uh, which is the nice tea store that recently opened in place of the Starbucks. So it's uh, it triggered the requirement because it's greater than the 10% of the awning area. It, that's the typical minimum maximum requirement. It cannot exceed 10% of the awning area. And if it exceeds that, uh, it requires it. So that's why it triggered the special permit. So those yeah. are the ones on the table. And uh, yeah, I can I have a answer. feeling they're going to go longer than my time would allow me to be there. Um, okay. Especially because there's three of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not when you said findings, I wondered if those were four o'clock hearings, but they're not. They're 530 hearings. So. Okay. So do you, are you pretty certain that you will not make it to that uh, on September 28th hearing, Elizabeth? Yeah, I don't think I'll have the, no, I, I probably won't be able to make that. Okay. Yeah, you're, you, you, I have already put you down in the past email, uh, from right. your past email that's not available. And we still have a quorum with four other members who confirmed. And of Good. course, please oh. let me know. Okay. Yeah, please. Sherry Taylor okay. will be available as Nathan, well. I do have a conflict that evening, but I will oh. forego it if I'm needed for a quorum. Oh, okay. Um, should I, I'll check back in with you as a date nears. That, yeah, yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Thank you. And how, how about you, David and Sarah? I should be good September 28th. Nothing else changes. Yes, I'm available. Okay. Um, just we'll note that and check back. I'll keep checking back as it gets near. Good. All right. So I think we just need a motion to adjourn, please. If I could, I just want to thank you guys for your efforts and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much on behalf thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. It, second. So Sarah and then Elizabeth, did you second? I did. And then, By roll call. Uh, yes. David? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Sarah? Yes.